Live at 6, this is 13 News Now. Off the top at 6, live pictures of City Center in Newport News. Now, I believe that's the ocean front. The first round of rain moves in out of the peninsula, but the slick streets remain. And to the beach. Within the past hour, showers started rolling in at the ocean front, but how much you get depends on where you live. Let's get straight to the experts. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Lawson is timing out a second round of rain. Jeff. Yeah, but both of these lines, in fact, we've had three or four different lines and they've really fallen apart as they've been coming out of Central Virginia, sort of eastern central North Carolina. You can see not a lot of low gray clouds. We do have an overcast deck, but it's sort of mid-level clouds out there right now. A couple of different lines. You can see some heavier showers offshore, still a few heavier ones back west of us, and there are more down into North Carolina. But as I put it all into motion, you'll watch several different rounds. There's a batch, there's a batch, there's a batch, and now here's a batch. So four different lines that I can count, and the last one getting ready to move through over the next several hours, and none of them have produced heavy precipitation. We've had generally light scattered areas of rain starting about mid afternoon. I felt some raindrops at about uh, 1 32 o'clock in Virginia Beach. Right now, 66 degrees, winds up a little. Last hour they were 21, this hour they're at 23. Pressure is still falling, and until that front goes through, we're going to continue with some rain chances for the next six hours. Then you can see not much of a chance at seven. We're in that sort of hole with everything out to the west. However, it goes up to about an 80% chance by nine nine o'clock and then pretty much drops off a cliff there. So does the temperature as we go late into the overnight. So highs for tomorrow just after midnight tonight, a cold air mass setting to move in and again a few showers. Take the umbrella this evening. A lot of you won't need it. Some of you will. I'll be back to talk about more rain in the extended forecast and just how cold it is tomorrow coming up. Jeff, thanks so much and take Jeff's certified most accurate forecast with you with the 13 News Now app. It's free in the App Store and on Google Play. Now to an incredibly tragic story of alleged child abuse. For the first time, we're getting an idea of the conditions inside a Matthews County home where a one-year-old boy died. Miranda Gilbert appeared in court today. That is where prosecutors revealed rats, mice, and cockroaches were found in the home where her son was scalded in a tub. Nico Clemens covered the hearing. We are going to prepare for trial. Disturbing new details surrounding the death of a one year old boy in Matthews. A medical examiner deemed the child's death a homicide after finding injuries to the child's head. The mother, Miranda Gilbert, faces several felony charges, including homicide, child abuse, and child neglect. This is a very tragic case. Inside the home, investigators say a one, two, and three year old were living in extremely deplorable conditions. Commonwealth's attorney, Tom Bowen. It's, uh, very disturbing to, to see the evidence. According to the criminal complaint, there were a significant amount of rats, mice, and cockroaches eating leftover food laying around in the home. Investigators found rodent feces and waste inside the home, including in areas where Gilbert stored the children's diapers, inside food products, and where Gilbert kept food in the kitchen. It's going to upset anybody to have the death of a one-year-old child. Last Thursday, Gilbert admitted to leaving her one-year-old son alone in the bathtub. When she came back, she found her child face down in the tub. According to the criminal complaint, the child died from severe burns to his face and body from the extremely hot water. This would be disturbing to anybody. And there was also a civil hearing regarding social services removing Gilbert's other two children from their grandmother's home and placing them either in foster care or with another family member. The attorney for Matthews County Social Services declined to comment on how that hearing went. Gilbert's attorney did not ask for a bond, and Gilbert has a preliminary hearing scheduled for April 4th. In Matthews County, I'm Nico Clemens, 13 News Now. It was the alert that sparked panic in paradise, a cell phone blast warning Hawaiians of an incoming missile, but it wasn't real. Well, just weeks later, another alert, this time on the East Coast. You may have woken up to this message for a tsunami warning. That, too, was a false alarm. So how do these messages get sent out? That's what NOAA is investigating right now. 13 News Now reporter Megan Shin went to Wakefield. Well, the National Weather Service here in Wakefield says they keep a good eye on their computer models and also on this screen looking for those warnings, just like the test tsunami one they got yesterday. 
all weather data that we look at, satellite, radar, model data. Jeff Orock is the meteorologist in charge of the Wakefield National Weather Service. Everything that we do goes out there. He says the false tsunami warning sent to some people yesterday is now under investigation by NOAA. It's trying to figure out where it did or did not go. And then, and then at that point, you know, that kind of becomes more of an investigation news story. Okay, how, how, how did this happen? Rock says the tsunami alert they got shows it's a test. You've got the test coding in the header, which is required. A headline here saying that this, this message is for test purposes only. Rock says NWS has a multi-step process to get a tsunami warning out to everyone. Before we hit send, literally there's a huge stop sign that will pop up on the screen. It says stop. Are you sure you want to issue this live product? Meanwhile, weather apps that misinterpreted the test as an actual event are not regulated and need a better system of checks and balances. This investigation could take weeks or months, so Orox says it could take a while to see if the false tsunami message changes how weather apps are monitored. In Wakefield, Megan Shin, 13 News Now. Statewide tornado test is scheduled for March 20th. Alerts will be sent out on TV and radio stations. You're looking at video of a previous drill. Emergency managers are asking all Virginians to take part, please, to learn what to do in case of a tornado. She is the 19-year-old kidnapped from JEB Little Creek last fall. Now state lawmakers want to make sure that what happened to Ashanti Billy never happens again. Delegate Jay Jones from Norfolk is backing a bill dubbed the Ashanti Alert. Think of it as an adult version of the Amber Alert. 13 News Now reporter Jacqueline Lee traveled to Richmond to talk to Jones about the bill. After 19-year-old Ashanti Billy was kidnapped from JEB Little Creek and eventually murdered by accused killer Eric Brown, her parents wanted something to be done. I wholeheartedly believe that had there been some type of alert that was able to be put out for her, she may have been coming home with us of her own free will. So they approached Norfolk delegate Jay Jones. It became a situation where uh, we thought we could make a difference. Delegate Jones worked with Virginia State Police and the Sheriff's Association to propose a bill that would create an adult version of an Amber Alert. The system would cost $50,000, but he said it's critically needed. This is forward looking and uh, we want to make sure that this doesn't happen to uh, other people so that other families don't have to experience the same pain that they did. The Virginia Critically Missing Adult Alert Program, dubbed the Ashanti Alert, would notify the public through push alerts and billboards about involuntarily missing adults who are too old for an amber alert, but too young for a silver alert. I'm very proud of the fact that we've got uh, Democrats and Republicans who have signed on to this legislation because, as I have said, this is a public safety issue. This is not a partisan issue. The bill will go before the Appropriations Committee tomorrow. In Richmond, Jacqueline Lee, 13 News Now. From his car after a wild crash in Suffolk. It happened just after 11 o'clock this morning on Portsmouth Boulevard. Yeah, you can uh, see right there that the car rolled off the road, flipped. The driver had to be flown to the hospital. Doctors are working to save him right now. In Williamsburg, the search is on for a suspected hit and run driver early Sunday morning. Police say Rebecca Ginger Brewell hit a car on Monticello Avenue, then took off. The crash sent someone to the hospital. That person remains in critical condition tonight. If you know where Brewell is, give the Crime Line a call. That number is right there on your screen, big and bold, 1-888-LOCK-YOU-UP.